This is how I got the money to build a 1 million pound property portfolio. First, I'm gonna break down how much money I really needed, and then second, how I got that money. So the first property I ever bought was this one bedroom ex-council property in Battersea Park in London. So you came through here, you had a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom and a living room. The entire property was pretty run down. I mean, the kitchen was in terrible condition. The bathroom was also in pretty terrible condition. I moved the kitchen into the living room to make that into an open plan living room. And then I turned the original kitchen into the second bedroom. So it went from a one bedroom flat into a two bedroom flat. And of course I modernized it by putting in a new kitchen, a new bathroom and everything else. So I bought the property for 237,150. I put down a 25% deposit, which was 59,287 pounds. Stamp duty, which is a tax share to pay when you buy a property was 9,357. The refurb to turn this into a two bed and to modernize it was 29,700 pounds. The legal fees came to 3,267 and the finance cost came to 8,806 pounds. Total investment, essentially how much money I put down myself was the deposit, the stamp duty, the refurb and the legals. The finance cost you can borrow so you don't have to put this down yourself. And so the total investment came to to 101,611 pounds. Now the total cost, which is essentially all of the costs combined, so the price, the stamp duty, the refurb, the legals and the finance, that came to 288,000 280 pounds. So when I bought my first property, I needed 101,611 pounds in cash my total cost was 288,000 pounds. Now, once the property was converted into a two bedroom property, it was then revalued by another bank at 320,000 pounds. At that stage, I refinanced that property, which essentially just means that I got a new loan on that property based on the new value of 320,000 pounds, as opposed to the price I bought it at, which was 237,000 pounds. And so the second bank gave me an 80% loan based on the new value, which is essentially 256,000 pounds which is this section here. So if you really think about what's happened is, I have bought this one bedroom flat and I've turned this into a two bedroom flat and my total cost is 288,000 pounds. So I've spent 288, but then the bank has given me 256 back. So really the only money this property has cost me is the difference between 288 and 256, which is this area here. And if you do the exact numbers, that comes to 31,799 pounds. So what that means is I end up with a two bedroom flat in London for only 31,799 pounds, not 101,000 pounds. So yes, I needed the 101,000 pounds in order to buy it and do everything. But in the end, I got 70,000 pounds back and it only cost me 31,000 pounds. Now, once I got the bulk of my money back, I then used that to buy my next property. I bought an ex-council one bedroom flat. You come through here, you had the main bedroom, the reception room, the kitchen, and you had the bathroom. I moved the kitchen into the living room to make an open plan living room, and I turned the kitchen into a bedroom. So that property went from being a one bedroom flat into a two bedroom flat. I bought that for 330,000 pounds. The stamp duty was 16,400. The refurb cost 26,850. The furniture cost 7,130 pounds. The legal fees 3,227. And the finance cost came to 20,488 pounds. The key in property is making investments which give you the maximum return and make you the most money. This investment could potentially give you the highest return in your property business. Now, when I sleep better, I make better decisions. And the return from those decisions is always gonna be much higher than any property investment I can ever make. And that's exactly what my MI mattress allows me to do. I bought an MI mattress back in 2021 mainly because it was the most awarded mattress in the UK. It's won pretty much every award that there is. Right now, I'm in a five-star hotel in the tallest building in Vietnam, and this mattress isn't as soft as my Emma mattress. Well, I don't know the science behind this and how many layers this mattress has, but with my Emma mattress, once the foam fully expands and you open up the zip covers, you can see that it's got six different layers, and when all of them come together, that is what makes it so comfortable. Now, with every investment, you have to also look at the risk. With Emma mattress, you get a 10-year warranty, so if anything ever breaks, it'll fix it. But to be fair, pretty much every company offers that nowadays. Where Emma goes above and beyond, and completely de-risk this investment is by giving you a 200 night trial. You can buy the mattress, you can sleep in it for 200 nights, which is about eight months. If you then don't like the mattress, you can call them up and they will come and pick it up free of charge. And just like every investment, you have to strike when there's a good opportunity. Right now, there's a huge Emma sleep sale with up to 55% off and an additional discount if you use my code Amit Khan. So thank you Emma for sponsoring this video and click the link in the description below to buy your own mattress and make one of the best investments you can make in your business by getting good quality sleep. Once this property was converted into a two bedroom property, it was then revalued at 450,000 pounds. And once again, I got a new mortgage on that property and I pulled most of my funds back. And so the London Bridge property ended up only costing me £61,532. So now once I got most of my funds back from the London Bridge property, I then bought an ex-council one bedroom flat in Vauxhall, London. Again, exactly the same thing. You come in through the main door, had a bathroom, kitchen, living room, and bedroom. 
I moved the kitchen into the living room. So that became open plan. And then I turned the kitchen into the second bedroom. I bought that for 290,000 pounds. The stamp duty was 13,200 pounds. The refurb cost 23,000 pounds. The furniture came to 4,598 pounds. The legal fees, 3,883 pounds. The financing cost came to 13,323. But I bought that for 290. When it was turned into a two bedroom, it was then revalued at 390. So with that property, I invested around 110,000 pounds. But when I refinanced that property, I got 80,000 pounds back. The Vauxhall flat ended up costing me 30,902 pounds. So now at this stage, I had three properties. The Battersea property, which was the first one, had cost me 31,799, which I went through earlier. London Bridge cost 61,000 and Vauxhall cost 30,000. The Battersea flat was worth 320,000 pounds. London Bridge was worth 450,000 pounds and Vauxhall was worth 390,000 pounds. And so those three properties combined were worth 1.16 million pounds and their total cost was 124,233 pounds. So I ended up with a portfolio worth over a million pounds for 124,000 pounds. So now the question is, how do I get 124,000 pounds in the first place in order to buy these properties? So before I got into the business of buying properties, I used to rent flats like this in Stevenage for 925 pounds per month. I then used to furnish them. I would take professional pictures and then I would put them onto platforms like Airbnb and booking.com. Now on Airbnb, people were paying me 2,500 pounds for 25 nights. So people were paying me twice as much as the rent I was paying to the landlord. And now of course I had some bills to pay in that as well, which were a few hundred pounds and then the rest was all profit. So typically with that strategy, you could rent a flat and make 500 pounds a month or a thousand pounds a month. Once that first property started making money, I then started renting more flats in Stevenage, Welling Garden City, Hartford, Bishop Stortford. I then started managing other people's properties for a fixed percentage in Greenwich, in Maidaville, in Victoria. And so I ended up with lots of rental properties, which were making pretty good cash flow. And that's the only thing I did from September of 2016 all the way till December of 2018 when I bought my first ever property in Battersea Park. And so that was partly how I got the money in order to invest in these properties. The second thing I did was I raised money from two types of investors. The first one are your passive investors. So these are people who have money in the bank, they've saved up money and they just want some sort of return from somewhere. So if you offer them a 6% return, a 7% return, 8% return, they're happy to lend you money in order for you to give them that return. And so as I started building my property business, I started documenting everything I was doing on social media, kind of like I am right now. And so all these professionals started getting in touch saying, hey, I've got 20,000 pounds, I've got 50,000 pounds, I've got 80,000 pounds. And so I offer them a fixed return. The second type of investor are people who are similar to yourself who watch videos like this and they actually want to do something in property themselves. I offer them what's called a learn and earn. So essentially people who invested with me, they got a fixed return on their investment. So they got a 6%, 7%, 8% return per year, but also they had an opportunity to learn everything at the same time. So we would do site tours, we would have Zoom sessions, they could ask me questions, all the documents and all the reports they would have access to. So not only would they be making money, but they would be learning everything in the process. And so that made it very attractive for them. And that allowed me to raise money because I could give them something which was useful for them. So now depending on the type of investor you're dealing with, you can either just give them a fixed return or you can give them a fixed return and teach them the entire process at the same time. And so by having a combination of having an Airbnb business which makes money and also raising money at the same time, that's how I got the £124,000 in order to get started and build a million pound portfolio.